Om Shanti. So today is Sunday, and we are going to revise today's Abhyakta Murli. This Murli is about Raj Satta and Dharma Satta, the power or authority of ruling and authority of religion. Recently we, dis- we discussed about different methods of reading Murli. So we will try to use those different methods. You are going to listen this Murli after some time. So, we will try to use word method, sentence method, topic method as I, as we discussed the other day that if you use all the methods or one method or many methods at the same time and go into the depth of the Murli. So, we will try to use almost all the methods in this Murli. Okay. So, we will begin this Murli. It's a very, very beautiful Murli on two important topics of ruling power and power of purity. So, I will begin with a very short story. There was this is a Chinese story. Uh, there was once a Zen, Zen monk and he was very a very realized person, a very pure being and there was a woman who used to look after him every day. She looked after him for almost 30 years and this Zen monk or enlightened person also started becoming becoming old. At the same time, the woman also became old and she was on her deathbed uh, about to die. So, one day she called a woman from the village and told that woman that I served this person for 30 years but I always had, but I always had the doubt that he is not a realized master. Somewhere he is lacking somewhere. So, you do one thing, I just want to have a check whether he really is a realized master or whether he really is situated in that highest stage of celibacy. So, what you do, she calls that woman, young woman, you go to his hut in the dead of the night and just stand there at the door. So, this woman, young woman, she goes to that monk in the dead of the night and stands there at his door. The moment that monk sees that woman, he becomes little restless to see her. And this monk had seen that woman many times in the past also. So somewhere he is restless, somewhere he gets agitated, somewhere he becomes passionate just seeing her. And then he comes out of his hut and starts shouting at that woman, Why you came here? Don't try to touch me. Just get out of this place. And so on and so forth. He keeps on shouting at that woman and she goes away. The next day, the first lady, the one who served this master for 30 years, she asked asked that woman, how, what was your experience? And she says that, I went to that man and he started shouting at me. He started telling me that don't touch me, don't come near me, go out of this place and so on. So, this woman who who is about to die, she says, this man, this Zen master, he has never realized the truth. And I served him for 30 years, but the seed of impurity is still in his heart. The seed of impurity, the seed of the seed of uh, what you can call lust is still there in his heart because this lust manifests in two forms one is positive form another is negative form this was the negative form negative form is to have hatred is to run away is to shout why this man was afraid of this woman if his heart was really clean if his heart was really pure there was no need of shouting at her there was no need of screaming, abusing and all those things which he did, there was some sort of lust lurking in his heart within. 
and that's why it was a maintained purity a feigned a counterfeit purity which he maintained throughout the life a sort of a sort of suppressed feelings of impurity were always there and he never worked on them and the moment they get got a trigger that tried to come out so this woman says ki this master whom i served had a maintained purity it was just a show of purity but he was never never very much pure to the core why i'm st- telling all these things because in today's murli baba has talked about purity in hindi the word is dharna and dharm these are the two words there is i don't think there is any word which is which can translate the word dharm it's such a great word it it religion this is a very poor translation of the word dharma so baba says there is another word which baba quite often uses and that is dharna you have the dharna now then only you can establish the religion of purity otherwise no how much you have imbibed this power of dharna power of dharna this itself is a power you know dharna the person who is having all the dharna in fact is powerful because he possesses the power of dharna there are different types of powers we have seen one is the power of speech and another is the power of action okay one is the power of yoga silence but this here baba is talking about power of dharna whatever i am speaking have i become the embodiment of that if i have to talk on purity to what extent my mind has become pure to what extent my every thought is pure to what extent my every dream is pure to what extent my attitude is pure we receive so many letters and so many emails and so many whatsapp from so many kumars and so many other married unmarried people they are writing to us that we are having bad dreams vicious dreams this and that dreams sometimes i wonder why all these things are happening baba has given such a elevated knowledge why are they not going into the depth of this why what is the reason when baba is talking about purity everywhere baba has talked about this purity in such strictest terms you go and read the murlis of 669 and murlis of 2003 15th november where baba has said that don't think it is an ordinary thing it just happened don't say don't take it ordinary here here with your ears open so purity means to what extent our thoughts have become pure to what extent our dreams have become pure our attitude our drishti our everything so everything to that extent pure is 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 the definition of purity so i was talking about power of dharna power of dharna so this is a word okay this is word method work on this today what is power of dharna what is power of dharna baba says to imbibe to inculcate this power of dharna now and then you become powerful so first thing is about purity what is the praise of purity purity is the greatest is the greatest decoration of this brahmin life baba has said it is a crown of light baba said purity is the thing that it helps to make the impure world pure the souls who are burning in the vices it cools down those souls it gives the third eye to the sightless it is the power that has sustained this world that has protected this world this building of the world from falling down otherwise long back the world would have been in a deteriorated condition so it is the power of purity that sustained how much this purity i have imbibed within myself the greatest the greatest hurdle in this yagya today is impurity if at all one word this is impurity 
because the reasons are also so obvious if you see the entire fabric the entire structure of technology around you see everywhere there are stimulus all those philips for impurity so a soul who is not protected with gyan who a soul who is not protected with meditation is always vulnerable for the onslaughts of impurity so the first thing to focus is purity and that purity should be very natural purity it should not be a strained one it should not be forced one it should not be something something you are doing out of compulsion out of force that sort of purity we don't want just as this man then monk who was pure whole life he was celibate whole life but even after becoming old after seeing a woman he is restless something is happening he is fearful why probably he has not understood that purity in depth and the foundation of purity is brahmacharya celibacy without that unbroken brahmacharya purity is not possible and the greatest sadhana one has to do is for this brahmacharya without sadhana brahmacharya cannot be maintained somebody says that i do my service i do amrit vela i do i listen murli then i do my service whole day and then do some yoga and then i go to sleep this is not enough you need acquire a very in depth knowledge of purity in depth study of purity because you have so many examples around all those who left this yagya there was only one reason all the time and that was impurity on the surface you see so many other reason there was a conflict there was he did not have good room or his partner were not good his boss was not good on the surface you see so many reasons so many i have seen even to that extent that they fall down from their stage and they take the path of suicide i'm talking about the case this happens why why we are not focusing on this purity so authority of religion means to be pure authority of religion means to be virtuous completely virtuous authority of purity baba has talked about three specialities what are they three specialities first is transformation all the religious leaders who came jesus christ muhammad everybody used to study their life they were so powerful that people followed them just like that it's not out of just because of their teachings if you see study the history just see there was hindu religion which was there and all of a sudden mahatma buddha came his teachings were absolutely against all vedas he was talking about to the extent of atheism no god he is silent on god but still how is it that people gave up hindu religion and followed him when buddha came people gave up hindu religion they gave up scriptures all the hindus got converted into buddhist why what power was there in in his speech or in his entire behavior or in his entire he was the embodiment of everything so look at this what they did he transformed others after buddha after few years shankaracharya came shankaracharya was again talking about scriptures all those people who had become buddhist again got converted into hindu because he was so powerful he defeated almost everybody in his, in his spiritual debates now he established monism monism is non dualism advaitvad everything is one brahman sarva khalvidam brahma if you study him this is what he philosophy he said after some time maybe after few years or for 100 200 years chaitanya mahaprabhu came he started teaching about bhakti which is almost or almost against your advaitvad so now people gave up shankaracharya and they started following chaitanya and from there bhakti marg started the path of devotion started from that point so you see the history one person comes he propounds one philosophy everybody is after him he goes after some time another person comes he tells some philosophy everybody is after him why because these are very powerful souls baba is talking that you are the basis of that future religion 
so you have that authority of religion so what you have to do is transformation what transformation for self and then transformation of others that is one second is paripakvata that is english word and very vaguely translated into english as firmness i will say it should be maturity but the inside explanation is about firmness because religion means baba said second quality or second speciality means you remain firm there would be oppositions there would be onslaughts there would be people would defame you people would try to pull you down but all those people never fluctuated so in this path of purity also all those things will happen people will try to pull you down on this path of purity there would be so many temptations in different form because as you progress ahead in spiritual life you maya also approaches you in new ways but that is why the word is paripakvata means maturity spiritual maturity you don't get influenced by anybody so that is second third is humility authority of religion means humility humility will reveal your virtues that's what baba said to the extent that you become spiritual you have to become more humble otherwise it is not the sign of religion all the religious leaders study their life they all were so humble not just religious leader even those philosophers who were very much virtuous they all were opposed socrates he was poisoned to death what was his fault because he was telling the truth but because those pandits those those religious people they could not tolerate what was the fault of jesus christ why those uh, people who were there around they crucified him what was the fault of mansur if you study the lives of all this what was the fault of mahatma buddha he was pelted with stones what was the fault of mahavir vardhaman all these people had to undergo those opposition atrocities people never praised them some people praised them but there were others traducers they always try to defame them but still they were very firm so in this path of purity also we have to remain very 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 firm no matter what happens let the whole world go against us we will not flinch from this path this is we have to remain completely unshakable and immovable in this path of purity because this is the basis of brahmin life if purity is gone everything is gone if purity is there everything is there if purity is there everything will come behind purity if purity is not there what you have even that will be lost where my purity is getting broken what i am doing which is against the principle of purity what i am seeing what is in front of my eyes what i see what i hear what i speak what i touch is any one of these things is stimulating the sensual desires within we have to purify all the sensual and sexual desires the hormones which are there they should get purified completely people come to us and they say we get vicious dreams i just wonder in my life if you ask me personally never 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 from my childhood till now i ever remember having ever got any vicious dream any time even on the before knowledge also i don't remember i used to see when i was in mbbs all those people who were there in our batch they were all so vicious they used to do all those things but i was the only person in one way i feel myself to be fortunate that i was protected in that atmosphere all the time how can one get a vicious dream it must be there happening in the whole day then only it will come at night otherwise how it will come so that extreme level of purity is needed past birth sanskars are also there always there but then we have to work on them now we have got knowledge of everything what is you are doing in the whole day that is very important they can overshadow even the past birth sanskar if you have whole day elevated thoughts how can past birth sanskar attack you just imagine we all are sitting in yoga 
in your shanti stam or in meditation hall if a person has got little purity he will get afflicted even little purity it's only when you are not at all connected with god that time those vicious thoughts attack you even the thoughts of the previous births even the sanskars of the previous births how they attack you because somewhere you are giving them uh, opportunity so that they attack you so akhand unbroken undivided un- unbroken undivided celibacy such power of celibacy alone will give and instill in you the power of dharana and that is the power of authority of religion you are the basis of baba has said check your chart bab dada is checking your chart today he has said this bab dada is checking your chart of all the children to what extent you have all the rights how much you are keeping the balance of these two purity and ruling purity and ruling power of religion authority of religion and authority of your ruling raj satta and dharma satta we are the foundation of that dharma satta so this is about purity there we need to understand this purity in great depths in great depths there was one murli i remember it's a very probably nowadays i think they have removed that word from there baba has said about uh, getting marriage he is talking about marriage they marry on the very second day they break their purity man sakar murli is there they marry and on the very second day they break their purity in one murli baba has asked about to kumars how many of you kumars say that we are following principles of celibacy and in the same murli baba said if any young kumar says yes baba doesn't believe baba doesn't believe so this impurity is so much ingrained and it is coming from so many births it's only that your soul becomes so pure that you are also able to see the previous births and you burn the sanskar one of the yoga experiment i had done long back was see all your 86 83 the 63 births okay go to one birth and burn the purity of that birth start from corporate start burning the imp- sorry impurity of all the births go to see that i am in my, i am in golden age then i am in copper this silver age now i have entered the first birth of copper age go to that birth okay and burn all the some impure sanskars of that first birth sixth first then second then third then fourth then fifth then sixth then seventh burn the sanskars of all the 63 births of impure births burn the impurity sanskars of all these births or you can take a chunk of five births at one time burn them you imagine that some flame is going out from there and you are burning them because you know somewhere we have been all all the time there must be some period where we were body conscious and we entered into vices and those sanskars are still there and one important thing if you eat something very delicious that sanskar doesn't stay for long maybe one birth but the person who indulges in lust that sanskar is very deep that is carried forward in next birth that is why you see blind people even they carry this sanskars of lust why they have never seen a woman a blind woman has never seen a man still she or he carries the sanskars of bhakt this impurity why of the previous birth because this sanskar of lust of vice is so strong so powerful that it tries to come out it just needs a philip philip means a stimulus a trigger the moment you get a trigger the lucifer effect starts the yeah, philip is required just a small lucifer effect of people who are in gyan for 50 years 60 years 10 years 20 years still they suddenly feel that uncontrollable urge uncontrollable attraction body suddenly and they fall down so 
this is very important to work on purity everyone everyone without barring anyone should work on this should check oneself where this purity is getting broken what are the principles and read about impurity more and more most important thing is reading about it we stop reading about it try to understand this what whoa, this is not a new subject from copper age many people have tried to be pure and they have been successful some of them but why they fell down we need to study others for this also why they fell down what is the reason so hence talking of purity to the extent that even dreams become pure second part of this murli is authority of ruling in this ruling baba has talked six points first this authority of ruling means to have a right to be embodiment of all the rights second you should be able to use this power as and when required and as per the law and order that is the third point fourth is you should be full of all the treasures so that so much so that you should be able to fill others with those treasures and last two important points are one is giving spiritual sustenance and sixth is about having unbroken and united kingdom first we'll discuss about unbroken and united kingdom unbroken and united kingdom means there should not be sanskars of dependency adhinta sanskars of dependency now take this as a second topic for today's journey what are the sanskars of dependency there we will divide this topic into four six points first physical dependency second mental dependency mental again two intellectual and emotional third spiritual dependency so three different types of dependency adhinta on others first is physical physical dependency means that you require in old age when you are deceased you are sick you are ill or sometimes even like that also you are dependent on others for physical things physically you are dependent on others as much as possible recently one one uh, very senior sister uh, had come from patna i forgot her name almost she was a dadi uh, what was her name she was had from come from patna she, she is from patna she is like a dadi only very old so i chandra dadi yes right chandra dadi she had come to opd she is so she doesn't want that other sister to hold her hand also let me be independent i'll walk independently out don't touch me i will walk independently i will sit she is having little problem in getting up but she doesn't want any help she is so <laughs> and she is so proud of that ki yeah, i am independent all my reports are normal even before i saw those reports she said they are normal you can see she is so confident about everything so she is independent even physically she doesn't want anybody to hold her hand and walk she doesn't like that i was i really love that yesterday only day before yesterday she came so independence physically independence second is phys- uh, in, uh, mental independence uh, dependency mental two types emotional we depend on others for emotion emotionally i am dependent on others i want expectations praise hopes all those things we discuss why we are emotionally dependent this is a very very good topic of all the topic this is the most important how to become emotionally independent why i am depending on others emotionally so emotional independence is very important intellectual independence to depend on others for churning <laughs> dr puri depending on others for churning so this happens many times everybody it happens like sometimes even for me when i am given a topic so sometimes i will send to sushil bhai or somebody please give me some points for this <laughs> so i do that many times so we have that habit it's a good thing also it's not a bad thing for gyan you should do it it's sort of sharing or exchanging combined efforts but sometimes that itself can become a burden because that person if he doesn't give me his journey i'm lost i have to speak tomorrow and i have not got any input from others so but even that should not be there depending on others for gyan for churning that dependency is also not needed so dependency 
on this second another this is intellectual intellectual and emotional and last is spiritual what is spiritual dependency baba said finish this sanskar of dependency what is spiritual dependency for purushat for palna for efforts if everybody does the purushat i also do if they, they don't do i will not do i will wait i will wait till they make a yoga program till they announce that bhatti dates are these three till that time i will wait so this is a spiritual dependency so finish the sanskars of dependency this is the sixth point fifth is a very important point ruhani palna spiritual sustenance you have to give spiritual sustenance to the whole world so that they feel that you are ancestors they feel that yes they have become very strong they are not weak they feel that yes you are the ones whom they can bank on so they should feel that so and we have to give that spiritual sustenance baba is telling us to become a king so i was just thinking what are the qualities of a king a king how a able a just a best king should be in those days they were kings now it is administrators managers hr or this you can say this people are there bosses cmd director all those people are there so ceo so director so all those people are there now in this and everybody is somewhere administrator maybe of small department maybe of one person two persons or one self so what are the qualities of a greatest king you study the all the if you take the 10 greatest king of india like starts from chandragupta maurya ashoka you to come to akbar you to come to maharana pratap rajput you come to go to maharashtra shivaji you go to punjab ranjit singh you go to jhansi uh, tani and you go to prithviraj chauhan so these are all some of the greatest king kanishka you go to harshavardhan so these are some of the greatest kings study the lives of all the greatest kings all this samudra gupta ho samudra gupta founder of the gupta dynasty his son chandragupta one found he also these are all the greatest kings of this world what qualities were there and they say if you are vikramaditya he is chanakya the king maker he is not king he creates king he doesn't become king he never become king any time he is a king maker so if you then i have i was just going through one statistic they named chandra chandragupta maurya as the top most of all the kings if you see other kings there were some faults in their life but they placed chandragupta maurya at the top why if you study his life he he was very much in purity all others some there some some fragments of impurity is there but chandragupta maurya he was focused he had but his guru was always standing with a stick <laughs> his guru was always standing with a stick to guide him to and others they did not have ashoka did not get chandragupta acharya to that extent which chandragupta maurya got and all those they were also good king i am not saying but they placed chandragupta because he is the first person who united the entire india on one undivided india india was divided into 16 janpads he united that so and there were so many qualities what are the qualities of king somlish then powerful courageous valorous then fearless no fear then mercy love love for the subjects caring for the subjects going at night and seeing their conditions then they will protect their kingdom so powerful so this is you making administrator giver all those things donors they are very bestower of everything very generous magnanimous so these are some of the qualities baba is telling us you become king now that you can become king there you should have this six qualities you should be embodiment of all the rights you should have be able to use all the physical and subtle powers both hmm? whenever you want physical powers also subtle powers also spiritual sustenance and 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 united uh, one kingdom that is the last point which baba said there he is saying that you have to free others from dependency sanskars of adhinta so from this ruling things what we can take as a homework is one how to give spiritual sustenance and second how to get rid of sanskars of dependency these are the two homeworks and from that point of dharma satta 
purity to what extent i have become pure one second virtuous third transformation fourth firmness paripakvata and fifth is the last point about humility so these are the five points in purity and six points in ruling dharma satta so this was all about today's murli and some few important things here in while meeting with group baba is talking about your speed of transformation should be very fast your speed of transformation should be fast otherwise weakness will remain weakness means kamzori if weakness is there you will go to that bow and arrow command and you will be go to moon dynasty so whether you want to go to moon dynasty or sun dynasty sun dynasty means sun very sharp for blazing sun moon is cool so don't become cool in purushant in effort you should be cool in your vyavhar in your behavior demeanor but in your efforts you should be like sun blazing sun scorching sun roasting sun as if an oven burning sun you know that oven microwave that sort of temperature should be there in your purushant very high temperature nikhilesh bhai that sort of temperature is required here so that you can burn all your previous sanskars of impurity and at the same time you should be able to burn sanskars of impurity of others hmm volcano you should be like a blazing volcano active volcano not that dormant one not that inactive one not that dead one but the lava should be coming out all the time from here from here and burning everything burning away everything so that sort of purity that sort of yoga is required that sort of transformation is required transform means you are changed just as you burn something what is remaining suppose if this wood wood is burnt what is remain ash is black you can't change. you can't even notice this is the same wood so in the similar manner all those sanskars of impurity the fragments little tidbits of impurity everything should be burnt so how the impurity will come in your dreams or your thoughts your in your imagination even it starts with imagination you starts with sexual fantasies and from there the mind starts wandering and it goes somewhere person sitting in madhuvan and he reaches somewhere how because these are the sanskars of impurity hidden there so first is to accept it is there see them the way to get rid of this impurity is to know it is to know it the moment you know it it will finish know the seed and you burn the seed last sunday know the seed you burn the seed the seed is there here don't say that i have become very pure your test of impurity would be if suppose you are in the middle of some metro city walking around there all people are there moving around all all plays and all dance of impurity around and still you remain untouched that is the level of your purity should be it is not running away i am sitting in madhuban i am feeling i am very pure supremely pure that is that is good that is a sadhana but the test of that purity would be there outside outside where everywhere you see the wild and the lustful dance of impurity amidst that impurity amidst that atmosphere you remain pure you remain untouched you feel all these are dead bodies dancing dead bodies cadavers so that that level of purity you have to even a step higher than that mercy first is for self protection and then even mercy for them what are all these people doing here there was one haridas a very great saint in indian mythology who was a who was a disciple of chaitanya mahaprabhu he was doing he used to do mantra jap hare ram hare ram hare ram hare ram hare krishna hare krishna there was one a very person who was opposed to him or his enemy he sent a prostitute to him every day that prostitute used to come to him he used to tell her just sit i will finish this and i will talk with you so every day she used to come he used to say just after 5 minutes then after 1 hour and he would continue his chanting 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 she would to come every day morning till evening she would to sit after few days or few months she also turns into a devotee so this power was there into she had come to seduce him she came as a seductress 
but she changed he she was changed so this is the power of purity so that's what baba has said this transformation should be very 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 fast and then there are a few questions these are from different moodly of 8th february 2nd uh, august 2nd august 73 the baba has talked about methods right method should be there three ways and three forms of service i will not go into detail of this time is getting over what is perfect stage what is powerful stage and then something about some little confusion of an object and respect it is objective actually objective means your main object and respect you can go through that so just remember these six points of ruling and five points of purity okay om shanti